Hey folks, Dave here with Rampant Wolf Games. I'm with Chris from D6 Machina. And today we're going to be talking about top five quirky competitive, nope, cooperative, cooperative. games. We have, th we have three lines, still have screwed it up. I know. Roll these credits. are these are games. <laughs> these are games that kind of uh, they break the mold of cooperative cooperative games. The uh -huh. standard mold of do something good, something bad happens, something good, something bad happens, and things get progressively worse until you hopefully win at that of the skin of your teeth. That's the standard mold. I'm going to amend that and say something really bad happens. Not just something bad happens, something really bad. You should have. Well, things things get worse, and you do something slightly good, and then yeah. things get worse, and things get slightly good. Yeah. Uh, so these are games that don't follow that mold, that do things a little askew. Yeah. So, number five is... Run, Fight, or Die by Richard Launius. Uh, this one is an interesting uh, take on the, the, uh, the zombie trope. Um, you all have your own area in which you're trying to defend yourself from zombies. However, if you, one of you dies, you all lose. So it's cooperative fail. But if you achieve the mission objectives, then you all live great. However, also, you can kill zombies on other players' mats, and you can also, unfortunately, send zombies to other players' mats. But so, it's cooperative. But it is cooperative. So sometimes it's like, hey, bring, bring, me that, bring me that zombie. You can't handle it, but I can. Yeah, or the, or the mutant zombies decide to come out and rip my face off. Want to help me out here? Yeah. So, so that's number five, Run, Fight, or Die, Richard Launius. Number four for cooperative quirky games. That's oh, gonna be cooperative quirky quirky games. It's a tongue tire twister. See, you can't even say tongue tires. Is a game called Mysterium. Now, Mysterium is an oddball because it almost seems like two different games in one. Mm -hmm. It has this basic Dixit-like format because it's basically done by the same people who do Dixit. They took the same kind of aesthetic mm -hmm. and turned it into a one. I don't want to say one versus all, but one and all mm -hmm. where one person is trying to communicate something to a group of people and can only convey that through very obscure clues and then those people have to try to interpret those clues which will get them further on this track to hopefully eventually figure out a variation on clue of who got killed by who and how and in which room have you ever tried mixing in Dixit cards? Like, just get rid of the Mysterio cards I, and use I, Dixit I cards? I haven't, but I've heard people who have. Yeah. Apparently, it, it's, apparently it works. It works. It There isn't as much information on the Dixit cards, though, so you're a little bit, it's a more, bit more challenging. It's a bit more challenging. But it's definitely weird because it, it goes by turn still, mm -hmm. but it's in no way, it's entirely organic between one side and the other. Yeah. Um, so uh, I like that because, once again, the challenge is purely communication, it, which is becoming a genre in itself because we're seeing other variations of the same format, but mm -hmm. it's still unusual enough that it's kind of on this list. That's number four, Mysterium. It's also a good game if you have someone in your group who's really talkative. You make them the ghost because they can't talk for the entire night. That's Done. why I am the ghost. Coming in at number four for our cooperative... Three. Oh, three. For our cooperative Kirky... Ah, Cooperative quirky you have, games. You have to buy around every single time. Yeah, is uh, Ryzen Five. Um, this game is basically a reskin of an old game from the '80s uh, called Mastermind. In which case, you ended up picking out a bunch of rows of colors of pegs, and then people tried to guess what they were. That's pretty much the premise of it. They'd tell you which ones were right, which ones were right colors, but in the wrong spot. They turned it into a board game. They got rid of Possibly the person who sets it up so did it with an app. Well, it's a press of preference. You can play Rising Five uh, with a, with a GM with a with a with a code master. It's not nearly as fun. Yeah. It doesn't add anything to the experience. And that person just sits there sad. And that person just sits there sad. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Play with the app. It works one hundred percent of the time. The camera is not one hundred percent, but the app can you work without mm -hmm. the camera. Yeah. yeah. Once again. It's got a few traditional elements. It's got cards. You yep. get some dice rolling. There's but, some combat. But in the same context, once again, it the entire difficulty is based entirely on players' capacity to solve a puzzle. Exactly. So that's coming in at number three, and that is Rising 5. Number two for cooperative quirky games. See? 
Mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. It's a game called Mask of Moai. Now, this is not an easy one to find, but it's a, a genre and a specific type of, type of game which we're probably going to see more of. In fact, there's a couple other really popular games that are using the same idea, and that deals with app integration, but specifically with VR. Mass MOI deals with communication, as we've discussed before, only this time one person is looking through the mask. It comes with a cardboard viewer, which is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the worst card... I mean, literally, getting a Google Cardboard for 20 bucks would have been would have better than this thing. But thankfully, there's a lot of drop-in. You can buy drop-in anywhere. But anyway, so that's what you look. You go look, look through and you try to convey what you're seeing. And you're trying to build a labyrinth mm -hmm. that these certain creatures can find their way out of. And if you build the labyrinth correctly and the creatures escape, you win. You're actually trying to find a route. But to do that, you have to build the route. And not only that, you have which literally build the through route. And there's two levels to it. So there's literally a, a three-dimensional labyrinth you're building on the table. And aliens, you got to build out of clay. Mm. Clay. I don't know why this is not number one. That's that's clay. That is Mask of My Eye, my number two pick. All right, and coming in at number one for cooperative quirky games is Space Cadets by Stronghold Games. Uh, comes. It's interesting. I find it quirky for very many reasons. Number one, when you knock the microphone. Number one, it uh, plays seven people, which is Unusual. just it's an odd number. Right? I mean, it's just like six. Okay, sure. Eight. Okay, but seven. All right. Seven. Not five or six or eight, but seven. Seven. It's, it is on us, honestly the weirdest player count. Uh, I have maybe five games on my entire shelf that do seven. Everything else is like eight or more or six or less. It's, it's, very, it's a very weird number. Um it's also very unique from the simple point of a standpoint of it is many mini games in one big game. So your pr progress in the game is split up into round. Uh, the round is split up into different phases. Is what actually I'm trying to say, uh, and in the different phases, people will be doing their own little mini games for moving the ship, uh, transferring power to shields, firing weapons, and all this is going on at the same time, and it is timed. But, uh, you know, it, it's not as bad as you might think. You're just like, oh, really? I only got that much time to do something? But they're really simple games for the most part. One is almost like playing poker. Uh, one is like playing Tetris. Um, the other one is... So it's not one quirky game. It's like four quirky quick games. Oh, it's, no, each, each station has its own quirky game. So it's like seven and one. It's weird. It, it, it is... It's definitely a different take on on games. Um, it uh, and that's why it came in at number one for me is because it's seven and one. I heard that the Das Boot cooperative submarine game runs very similar to that. <gasps> yes, where every person has their own little mini game. Yep, that they have to run. And that's going to be arriving soon, and then we can do a review of that. Oh, you, oh, right, you did back it. I did. Back I decided it. not to because. I'm poor. That's true. No, there was another reason. At the time... You didn't like app integration. No. I had no problem with app integration. Oh, okay. um, we had a problem with the real time. Oh. No, you, you, know, you know my opinion on app integration. I'm on your side. I have no problem with app integration. Obviously, no. look at the, the app keys we have. But it's the real time element. That's a, that's a, that's a no-go with uh, my fiance. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. It, it's going to be interesting to see who I can get together to play that game. I mean, no, I mean, I'll, I'll play it. Yeah, I'll play it. Yeah. I mean, it's a cooperative submarine game. I am all there. But yeah. I just know that's not a game that's going to go a lot of play in my house. Therefore, I'll let you back it. Well, see, I, another real-time game that, that I, I back that uh, you have to have the right people with, and that is uh, uh, Project Elite. Yes. That one is uh, Project Elite, Escape from the Temple, Escape from Zombie City, all those. Yeah, no. <laughs> the, the, the wife does not like. <laughs> so that is number one for cooperative quirky games. Queens. That's Space Cadets. Space Cadets. And I've been Dave. And I have been Chris. And remember, the rules are just suggestions. Play the game how you want to play it. <laughs>